In this video, I'm going to talk about the revision to the notion of a completed open branch in the language of predicate logic. So what is that revision? Well, a branch is considered a completed open branch in predicate logic if and only if it meets three conditions. The first condition is similar to propositional logic. It basically states that a branch is a completed open branch if and only if all the complex well-formed formulas that can be fully decomposed are decomposed. The second and third conditions um, are for all universally quantified formulas, the, so uh, a formula where the main operator is the universal quantifier that occurs in the branch, there is a decomposition for that universally quantified formula for each name that occurs in the branch. Now this particular clause is, I think, the more difficult to understand than the other two. So we'll kind of come back to this in just one second. But let's just state this third condition. The third condition is that the branch does not contain a formula and its literal negation. So you don't have something like P and not P or uh, not PB and PB in the branch. Okay, so let's go back to the second conditions because it's the most important one and we need some illustrations to get a clear sense of this. So what this condition states is that for every universally quantified formula in the branch, we decompose that universally quantified formula for every name that's in the branch. So what this is saying, just let's give an example here. Let's say you had PA and you also had AX px. When we go to decompose this universally quantified formula using universal decomposition, we can replace the universally quantified variables with any name that we want. So we could pick b or c or d. But this restriction states that we can only call the branch open if for every name that occurs in the branch, we've decomposed the universally quantifier, universally quantified formula for that name. So in order to have a branch that just contains these two formulas to be open, we need to decompose this second formula, that universally quantified formula, using A. So the idea here is that A is a name found in the branch. There's a universally quantified formula here. So we need to make sure we decompose that universally quantified formula using A, where we substitute the A for the uh, quantified variable. The reason we want to decompose the universally quantified formulas for every name is just to ensure that there is not a latent contradiction found in the branch. So let me give you an example. Suppose we had not PB and again we had AX PX. Now suppose we looked at the second formula into universally quantified formula and we're going to replace the X with A. Now at this point we might say, well, I've decomposed the universally quantified formula once. I could go onward and onward. I could pick C and D and E and F and so forth and so on. I could pick any name, but I need to find some sort of stopping place. You'll notice though that B is found in this branch. And were we to decompose the universally quantified formula for B, what we would get is not an open branch, but we would get a closed branch. We would get a formula PB and its literal negation, not PB, in the branch. And this would lead to the branch closing. So the idea behind this second condition is that we decompose all the universally quantified formulas for every name that's found in the branch just to ensure that there is no formula in its literal negation found in the branch. Let's look at two more examples to help illustrate these three conditions. Now imagine you have a truth tree that consists of these four propositions and you'll notice that only proposition that can be decomposed is this fourth proposition, this universally quantified AXPX. When we go to decompose it, we need to make sure we decompose line four, the universally quantified formula for every name that's found in this branch that contains the universal quantifier. So we see that A is uh, at line one, B is line two, and C is found at line three. So we need to decompose the universal quantifier three times. Once for A, once for B, and once for C. So once for each name that's found in the branch. Now I wanna look at a second example, but this second example will not only illustrate the three conditions associated with a completed open branch, but it also suggests a strategy, an efficient way of decomposing truth trees. And that strategy is that we should always try to decompose universally quantified well-formed formulas last. We leave the, the, those formulas to decompose them last and try to decompose all the other formulas first. 
Now in this example, we decomposed a tree that consists of two formulas, this existentially quantified x px and the universally quantified x not px. In this particular example, there's nothing wrong with the use of the decomposition rules. There's just something wrong with thinking that this represents a completed open branch. So at line three, what we have is a decomposition of line two using universal decomposition. And this is fine. We can replace the universally quantified variable X with any name that we want. And line four, this is also an acceptable use of existential decomposition. We look through the branch and see, hey, A is already found. And there's a restriction on the use of existential decomposition such that you cannot pick a name that's already found in the branch. And since A is found in the branch, then um, we need to pick a different name, and so B is a perfectly acceptable name to use. The problem with calling this branch, though, a completed open branch is that you'll notice that there is a name, B, found in the branch and a universal quantifier found in the branch, and this universal quantifier has not been decomposed using B. That is, we haven't replaced the universally quantified variables X with B. And so we'll need to go ahead and decompose this line two, universally quantified X, not PX, using B in order to make sure that we decompose the universal quantifier for every name that's found in the branch. And when we do this, instead of finding an open branch, we would get not PB, we would see that the branch is actually a closed branch. Now, a further thing about this particular example that is suggestive is it points to a, a particular strategy for decomposing truth trees, and that is to decompose universally quantified well-formed formulas last. One of the things to note is that this tree took five lines. We had to, we decomposed the universal quantifier at line three, then we did existential, and then we saw, oh, we have this B right here, and there's a universally quantified formula here, so we need to decompose line two using B. So it caused uh, this fifth line. But were we to decompose the existentially quantified formula first and leave the universally quantified formula for last, we would see that it would save us a line here. So at line three, we decompose the, universe, the existential quantifier at line one, and we picked A because A is a name that's not previously found in the branch. At line four here, we decompose the universal quantifier. And remember, when we decompose the universal quantifier, we decompose it for every name that's already found in the branch or that's found in the branch. And since A is found in the branch, we picked A. And it gives us the same result. The tree is closed, but you'll notice this only took us four steps rather than five steps. So the goal of this video was to explain what a completed open predicate logic branch was. And that is a branch that has the following three conditions. One, all the complex well-formed formulas that can be decomposed have been decomposed. Three, there's not a formula and its literal negation. And the most important or most difficult to understand one is that all when we have a universally quantified well-formed formula in the branch, and there are names, there's formulas with names found in that branch, we need to make sure we decompose the universally quantified formula for every name that we see in the branch. 